Good afternoon. And welcome to St. Charles Borromeo and to our celebration of the third Sunday of Easter. Like the disciples on the road to Emmaus, may our hearts burn within us as we encounter Christ in the breaking of the bread. Please take a moment and silence all cell phones and electronic devices. We have just a few announcements. Please stop in the gathering space to make your reservations for bus transportation to the Behold KC event on May 4th at Liberty Memorial. Space is limited and the deadline for reservations is Wednesday, April 17th. The cleaning angels will meet at 10 a.m. on Monday morning. All are welcome to help clean the church. Don't forget that many hands make light work. The Friendly Club meets on Tuesday for 9 a.m. Mass, followed by a potluck brunch. This month's topic is Scam Awareness and will be presented by Zach Thompson from the Clay County Commissioner's Office. All are welcome. And you will not want to miss next Sunday's Borromeo Breakfast which is being hosted by Isaac Navarro and the St. Charles Hispanic Ministry. Breakfast will be served from 9.30 to 10.45 in Borromeo Hall. And finally, if you have a student who will be entering high school in the fall, St. Pius View Books are available in the gathering space for your review and consideration. Please take a copy home. And now let us joyf um, joyfully greet Christ in one another by welcoming those around us. And we lift our voices in singing Alleluia number one, which is found in your hymnal on page 570, 570. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. With How are you all? Awesome. awesome, awesome. And I just want to say uh, hi to all, everyone who watches us online, especially our homebound parishioners, people who are not able to be with us physically here, but spiritually they are uh, here, and uh, welcome. 
uh, everyone who watches us in online. And also, uh, all the guests visiting here and uh, this weekend and uh, everyone. And uh, so together as one family, in this Easter season, we celebrate our loving Lord, his resurrection, reminding us the baptism we have received. And uh, well, you know what happens. I am coming with the holy water and uh, reminding ourselves the baptism we have received. of water bless the Lord give him glory and praise forever springs of water bless the Lord give him glory and praise forever oceans of earth sing glory to God praise to the one who formed you Sound from your depths a hymn that tells the wonders God has done. Oh, blessed be God forever. Blessed be God forever. Springs of water, bless the Lord. Give him glory and praise forever. in the highest and on earth peace, peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God Almighty, Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit in the glory the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. <clears throat> May your people excel forever, O God, in renewed youthfulness of spirit so that rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. And I love to invite children to please come forward, children, to pick up your uh, bulletin.
A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter said to the people, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers has glorified his servant, Jesus, whom you handed over and denied in Pilate's presence when he had decided to release him. You denied the Holy and Righteous One and asked that a murderer be released to you. The author of life you put to death, but God raised him from the dead. Of this we are witnesses. Now I know, brothers, that you acted out of ignorance, just as your leaders did. But God has thus brought to fulfillment what he had announced beforehand through the mouth of all the prophets, that his Christ would suffer. Repent, therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be wiped away. The word of the Lord. Lord, let your face shine on us. Lord, let your face shine on us. When I call, answer me, O oh my just God, you who relieve me when I am in distress. Have pity on me and hear my prayer. Lord, let your face shine on us. Know that the Lord does wonders for his faithful one. The Lord will hear me when I call upon him. Lord, let your face shine on us. O oh Lord, let the light of your countenance shine upon us. You put gladness into my heart. Lord, let your face shine on us. As soon as I lie down, I fall peacefully asleep. For you alone, O oh Lord, bring security to my dwelling. Lord, let your face shine on us. A reading from the first letter of St. John. My children, I am writing this to you so that you may not commit sin. But if anyone does, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the Righteous One. He is expiation for our sins, and not for only our sins, but for those of the whole world. That may we be sure that we know him is to keep his commandments. Those who say, I know him, but do not keep his commandments are liars, and the truth is not in them. But whoever keeps his word, the love of God is truly perfected in them. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia, 
Jesus, open the scriptures to us. Make our hearts burn while you speak to us. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. The two disciples recounted what had taken place on the way and how Jesus was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. While they were still speaking about this, he stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. But they were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. Then he said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do questions arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Touch me and see, because a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you can see I have. As he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While they were still incredulous for joy and were amazed, he asked them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of baked fish, and he took it and ate it in front of them. He said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and in the prophets and Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name to all the nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. May your sins be forgiven. For the first 19 centuries of the church, the church referred to the third person of the Holy Trinity as the Holy Ghost. But by the early 1900s, the translation was changed to Holy Spirit, mainly because the English term ghost had increasingly become referring a, re a reference only to the spirit of a dead person, like a shadowy ghost. And this is the emphasis that Jesus makes to his disciples, that he, in fact, is really in the physical body, as well as in the divine nature of the Father who had raised him from the dead. The disciples, on the other hand, are frightened because they are sure they're seeing a ghost something that they just certainly can't explain. Jesus is born of a human mother, performs physical miracles. He dies a painful physical death. He is resurrected physically, and now he appears to his apostles physically after the resurrection. In the verses just before our gospel uh, reading today, we hear of the two disciples who met him on the road to Emmaus. And they did not recognize him until he celebrated the Eucharist with them. This is where he is leading the disciples. It's not just to prove to them that he is real in the physical body, but he must get them to accept that first before he can take them and us to the goal of his mission, to the goal and purpose of the covenant of the Father. This is where he is leading the disciples. He is not a ghost any more than the Holy Spirit is. He was and is and always will be with us in the form of the Eucharist. They testified that they didn't recognize him, the two that were with him on the road, until he celebrated the Eucharist 
the breaking of bread. 2,000 years later, we have the celebration, the Eucharist, the thanksgiving that Christ is with us still. This is what the Mass is, the celebration of the Eucharist. This is my body. Do this in memory of me. He told the disciples, but he was saying this for us as well. And even now, as he appeared to the 11, they thought he was a ghost and not a physical body. And he said to them, look at my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Touch me and see, because a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you can see, I do. And to further prove that he was not a ghost, he ate some food in front of them. This is why the church changed the name of the third person of the Most Holy Trinity to the Holy Spirit, who Jesus said he was going to leave with us to counsel us in our faith journey. It stresses then the reality of the resurrection. This risen Lord is no hallucination. He is real. The Jesus who died was in truth the Christ who rose again. Christianity is founded on the one whom, as a matter of historical fact, faced and fought and conquered death and rose again. Otherwise, this would all just be a figment of human imagination, but it's not, as the disciples are our witnesses that this really happened, as we hear repeatedly in the epistles of Paul and Peter, James and John, and the sacred gospels. The words of the Apostles' Creed are very literal and physical. The, work, the Greek words translated for the resurrection of the dead are anastasis nekron, which means the standing up of the dead body. The dead that stands up as its original body, not reconstituted as a ghost. And this is what the Father does for our bodies and our souls. He is the creator, creator after all, of our bodies and our souls. He is the creator of new life, the eternal life for both our bodies and our souls. What we will be after death, what kind of bodies we will have, we cannot comprehend. Any more than an unborn baby can comprehend what life in the world outside of the womb will be like. But we can kind of use that as an example. None of us knew, and of course we don't remember, once we were born and suddenly we're in a new environment, something that we had no idea we were going to be in or what it was going to be like. Now we have hints of it in Christ's resurrection appearances and in other places in Scripture, especially the second chapter of Paul's first epistle to the Corinthians. What eye has not seen and ear has not heard and what has not entered the human heart what God has prepared for those who love him. We are told then that we don't know what it is, but he is preparing for us because he loves us. Until then, we walk by faith, not by sight. To the skeptic who argues, seeing is believing, and I didn't see, so I don't believe. And we should reply, perhaps you have that backward. Believing is seeing, and if you believe, you will see. As Jesus told Thomas, you believe because you have seen. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. And that is you. You didn't see the death and resurrection 2,000 years ago, but if you are humble enough to trust in God's will, if you come to love him, if you then have the faith that allows you to know for yourself the kind of wonderful things that he must have in store for us, the things that John, uh, Thomas came to believe, and as a result, became extremely devout in his faith. Because that is what faith is. You weren't born with it. I know for a fact I wasn't born with it. It's what we have to come to see, what we have to 
come to believe ourselves, what we have to confess that we do believe through the power and the help of the Holy Spirit who guides us, that makes known to us that he is real, not a ghost. He is risen and that he will remain with us always. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. My dear friends, now let us renew the promises of holy baptism by which we once renounced Satan and his works and promised to serve God in the holy Catholic Church. And so I ask you, do you renounce Satan and all his works and all his empty show? Do. do you believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do. do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary? suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? And this is our faith. And may Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed on us forgiveness of our sins, Keep us by his grace in Christ Jesus, our Lord, for eternal life. Amen. Amen. Let us offer ourselves with our own prayers. That those who teach in the church will remain faithful to the gospel of repentance and forgiveness. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our that the leaders of the church, government, and industry will work together to provide food, employment, and justice. We pray to the Lord, Lord hear our that those who are dying may know the peace of the risen Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our Let us join the Office of Child and Youth Protection this month of April, praying in honor of the survivors of child abuse and their courageous journey of healing. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our For the sick, the homebound, the bereaved, and all those names are listed, that are listed in our St. Charles prayer chain. We pray to the Lord, Lord hear our that Christ, our advocate with the Father, will bring the dead to eternal glory, especially parishioner Mark Kornblum, who died this week, and for Andrew Lair and Irene Tyndall, for whom this Mass is offered. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear Thank you, Lord. Come and listen to our prayers, bringing us all together as one family, bringing us together as one body. Together, we make you so powerfully visible in our lives. We make all these prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Our hymn of preparation is Now the Green Blade Rises number 182, 182. Thinking that 
that he would never wake again. Laid in the earth like grain that sleeps unseen. Love is come again like wheat arising. Lord, wash away my iniquities, cleanse me from all my sins. Let us pray, my dear friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive, O Lord, we pray these offerings of your exultant church and as you have given her cause for such great gladness grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness through christ our lord Amen. the lord be with you and with your spirit lift up your hearts we lift them up to the lord let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation. At all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to love you yet more gloriously. When Christ our Passover has been sacrificed for he is the true lamb who has taken away the sins of the world by dying he has destroyed our death and by rising restored our life therefore overcome with paschal joy every land every people he excels in your praise and even the heavenly powers with an angelic host, sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. 
and you never cease to gather a people to yourselves. So that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of, his, of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, St. Charles Borromeo, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis or Pope James or Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom, that we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ.
Lord Jesus Christ, who said to the apostles, I leave you peace. My peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ and the blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life. Our communion hymn is I Has Not Seen, number 475, 475. Jesus. 
lives are but a single breath. We flower and we fade, yet all our days are in your hands. So we return and love what love has made. I has not seen. Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, 
that those you were pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. Awesome. Thank you all for being here and uh, I hope you enjoyed my homily. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Well, uh, and also, uh, you know, uh, professing our faith, and that is what we are doing every day, coming together. A procession begins from our home to get here, right? It's a, I want to be in the church. A public profession of faith. I mean, Behold Casey is a, a beautiful event. We are going to have both dioceses together in a Liber the Liber Liberty Memorial on May 4th. It's a powerful, powerful awesome public expression of our faith. That is what's happening on first weekend of May, May 4th. So if you can, please register. There is a, we have a, you know, in case if you don't want to drive by yourself, there is a bus, right? So you can, uh, you know, you can definitely sign up there and uh, it can shuttle, bus can shuttle. And uh, so therefore, uh, in case, and we will get more information. And uh, if you don't want, if you want to participate, if you don't want to drive, there is a possibility. Okay, you got it. Okay, awesome. Second thing is like sec tomorrow is the third Sunday, Borromeo. Breakfast. Okay, you should say that. You know, breakfast at Borromeo every third Sunday after eight thirty mass. It's an opportunity again come together uh, as one family together and have breakfast and uh, meet some new people. And uh, it's been great every month. We have 150 to 160 people coming every breakfast. It's awesome. And this weekend, uh, and this coming weekend is going to be the, our Hispanic ministry is going to cost it. So different ministries doing that. It's really, really awesome. And uh, let, well, I invite you personally and uh, let us make it really, really awesome. Well, let us ask our loving Lord's blessing. May the Lord bless you. Amen. May the Lord always protect you. Amen. May the Lord be gracious to you. Amen. May the Lord shine his face upon you, lift up his countenance upon you. Amen. May the Lord give you peace. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May the Almighty loving Lord bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord by our lives. Thanks be to God. We invite the children to come forward and join us on instruments of praise as we go forth to share the good news singing, Christ the Lord is risen today, number 178, 178. Christ the Lord is risen today. Love's me.